All right, everybody, what I'm going to be doing today is changing the transverse leaf springs and the shocks on my 2005 Corvette. Um, this is with the assumption that you already know how to get the car in the air, get the wheels off, all that stuff. I've already got that done, so what I'm going to work on now is getting that spring out of there, and then once I have the spring out, I'm going to change the shocks out. The spring is actually pretty simple. It's only held in by four bolts. These two bolts here on one side, and then on the other side, two bolts again. <clears throat> and then it just makes contact with the suspension right up here with these little pads. Um, so the process is, is you come up here and unbolt on one side <clears throat> The upper A-arm. There's two bolts holding in the upper A-arm. One right here, one on the other side of the shock, which you really can't see. It's kind of back there. So support the lower A-arm with the jack. Remove the two bolts from the upper A-arms on either side. Lower the lower A-arm down with the jack. And then that's pretty much going to relieve the tension on the spring right up here where this pad is you can remove these two bolts here um, actually you may want to do that on both sides go ahead and just remove the upper AM on both sides that way it goes ahead and relieves all the tension on the spring all the way across and then remove the four bolts to allow the spring to come out um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now on this one side alright so you can see the setup here I've got the lower control arm supported by the jack nice long breaker bar and I'm getting ready to remove the two bolts for the upper A-arm. Alright as you can see here I've got the upper A-arm removed I've done that on both sides uh, relieve the tension on the spring and I've actually already started loosening the four bolts underneath here I was a little concerned because I didn't really do a whole lot of research as to whether or not there was going to be a lot of tension on this spring still and uh, as you can see, there's uh, pretty much no tension down on these bolts right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove these bolts out of here and uh, see how it goes from there. Alright, I've got the bolts pretty much out. But I did notice one other thing I'd kind of like to share with you guys. If you get one bolt out, loosen the other one, I don't know, about halfway. You can actually swing this out of the way there without having to remove that entire bolt might make things a little easier as they just have the blue Loctite on them. They're kind of a pain in the butt to get out. Okay, so I was trying to see if I could get the spring out now that I've got those four bolts undone underneath. And it didn't really seem like it wanted to come out. It seemed like it still had some tension on it um, from the suspension. Like, it wasn't, a, it wasn't allowing this arm to come down enough to relieve all the tension out of it so you get the spring out. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm removing these two bolts here on the shock because I think it may have extended the shock all the way and the shocks not allowing the A-arm to drop down any further so I'm gonna remove those two bolts see what I have after that alright yeah so that's what it was the shock wasn't allowing it to come down any further uh, now that I've got the shock unbolted to the top as you can see there that spring is pretty much ready to just come out all I gotta do is Get underneath there, get that bad boy out, pop the new one in. We'll be ready to rock and roll. Alright, so everything's been taken apart. It's time to start putting stuff back together. I've got my Bilstein Sports shocks here. Um, this is for the rear. What we're going to have to do is remove this metal mounting bracket off of the old shock. Put it on this shock right between these two uh, rubber pieces right there. So, that's what I'm going to do. So after assembling the shocks, this is what we have. Notice we put one washer on the bottom, one washer on top, sandwiched it with the two rubber pieces. Now the rubber pieces do have, I should have left it apart before I showed it to you. Um, it's like a little, like a little bump on the bottom that goes like that. Um, it's going to be on both pieces. You want that little bump to go between this two between this metal thing here so it kind of sandwiches it down in there. Now when you go to put the shock on the car notice that it's kind of at an angle. You want that angle to go towards the car 
like that. Not away from it, like that, but towards it, like that. Got it? All right, I'm gonna slap these babies in there. All right, now as you can see here what I've done, I've used a jack to help um, lift everything back up into place. What I did before using the jack to lift everything was go ahead and set the shock in, put the lower bolts in it, that way it's kind of where it needs to be. I made sure that angle on the plate I was talking about was proper, that it was angled towards the car. Started using the jack to lift. Once I got it into place, started getting a bolt in. I'm gonna get the two bolts here. I've got my two bolts back in over here. I haven't tightened them down yet. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything for the shock first, then tighten these two, then tighten the bottom, the bottom bolt down here, get everything all nice and snug. Do the same thing on the other side. We'll be ready to rock and roll. I've already got my spring back in there as well. This is my Z06 spring that I installed. Um, really all I had to do was slide that up into place and put those four bolts in to hold it. I haven't tightened those down yet either because I was waiting until I got um, the suspension back up in there as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. There we have it. New shocks, new rear spring. I'm going to do the same thing on the front. I'll make a video of that as well. All right, everybody. So I've already shown you how to do the rear on this. We're about to do the front. Pretty much the same process as doing the rear. Where, uh, the only difference is instead of um, for the shock, instead of having the two bolts here, we've got the one bolt up here that we're going to have to take off. It's going to be tight quarters working up in there, so it's going to be kind of rough. I'll let you know if I find out any secrets or anything that makes it a little easier. Uh, but essentially what you're going to do is remove this nut right here while holding this one steady because otherwise when you try to loosen it, it's just going to spin. You don't want that. You're going to remove two bolts here, two bolts here to release the upper A-arm. So you can swing that up and out of the way. Then remove the lower two bolts down there and uh, get that bad boy out of there. So let's have at it. Hey, just a quick safety tip as you're doing this. Um, I can see that the spring is actually pushing down on the entire A-arm assembly as I'm loosening up this shock here. So I went ahead and popped a jack underneath here just to kind of hold everything in place as I undo this nut because I don't want that to just kind of pop down you know, maybe injure me or something like that. I don't want anybody else to get hurt. So just wanted to throw that in there. All right, everybody, as you can see, this side's done. Shock is out. A-arms are moved. Everything's gone. Uh, the only thing I want to make you aware of here is notice that when I popped that A-arm off, there were some washers back behind here. Looks like there were, there was one washer on each one of these bolts, two washers on each one of these bolts. If they fall out on you, just make sure you're aware of how many washers were on each bolt and everything. That way you get your suspension geometry as close as possible to the way it was before you took it apart. All right, I'm going to go hit the other side. So yeah, what I was talking about before, about those washers, there's one on this one, one on this one, one on this one, and one on that one. So make sure you're aware of how many washers come off of those A-arm bolts when you take them down. Now there is an alternative method that some people say is better than uh, the way that I just did this to get the shock out. And what they do is they take really fat zip ties. And uh, actually, let me grab one of the shocks. It'll be easier to show you what I'm talking about if you're actually looking at the shock. Um, what they say that you can do <coughs> is put some fat, loop some zip ties around up here loop some zip ties through the bolt holes here and then run a zip tie between those two loops that you made compress the shock down while pulling the zip tie tight and that will compress the shock and hold it down so you can pull it out without removing that AR. Personally that sounds like a lot of work to me I think just taking out the four bolts for the A-arm and getting that out of the way is a little bit faster but do it however you want to do it it's your time, your car, do it the way you want. All right, now that I've got the shocks out on both sides and everything, I'm ready to remove this leaf spring here. Now this leaf spring does have a bit of tension left on it still, even after removing the arms, the shocks, all that stuff. So I just read up on it and what I'm gonna have to do is remove the sway bar end link. That will allow the arm to come down a little further, uh, release the rest of the tension on the spring. Then we can go ahead and slide it out so after removing the sway bar in link, 
Um, the spring came out with a little bit of uh, persuading is the proper word. I actually pulled it this way. This was the end link I took off. So pull it towards the side that you take the end link off. I think I said before that you need to push it away from that side, but actually pull it towards that side. It actually works better that way. Now I replaced... All right, so there we go. Everything's tightened back up. Nice new Bill Stein shocks in there. Uh, this is just the one side that I have done so far, but I'm going to go ahead and make my way over to the other side, put those four bolts back in the bottom of the leaf spring, put the wheels back on it, and drive it. We are ready to roll. One other thing I'd like to add is that people, I've read somewhere that people say you got to remove this to get to the mounting bracket underneath here for the shock. Um, I didn't do that. I just kind of worked around it. I felt like that was one more step that I would have had to do to get everything done. Um, and I didn't have to do it. I was able to work around it. If you feel like you need to remove that, it's not that hard to remove. Uh, it looks like you've just got a bolt here, a bolt here. Remove those two bolts that you just lift up and out of the way. So it's probably not too difficult. I just didn't feel like doing it. So yeah, there you go. It is going to be all done. I'll let you guys know how it is. Thanks for watching.